Pokemon moves come in all different shapes and sizes, types and effects, and as we have shown in a few videos already, there's also a lot of crazy and cool facts about them that you aren't really made aware of when you're just using them while playing the games. As we have mentioned in those videos, however, there are hundreds of moves, almost a thousand in fact, and we have only covered a small handful of them. Naturally, there are still plenty more out there to go through, and that is what we are doing today as we look at 10 more crazy facts about Pokemon moves. Let's check it out. So you all know that I love to talk about cut Pokemon content, so why don't we start off with some potential cut content concerning a move. Retaliate is a move that was introduced in Generation 5, where the user gets revenge on the opponent for the fainting of one of their team members in the previous turn. Ergo, the power of the move doubles if it is used in the turn after one of your other Pokémon has fainted. This move is also TM67 in Generation 5, and in the Japanese versions of Pokemon Black and White, it is displayed as a Dark-type TM in the bag, despite being a Normal-type move. Given this, and the description of the move stating that the Pokemon using it acts by taking revenge, could mean that Retaliate was originally intended to be a Dark-type move instead of a normal one before plans were changed for some reason. Speaking of Generation 5, another move that was introduced during this gen is Psy Strike. The interesting thing about Psy Strike is that it is actually Mewtwo's signature move, even though it was introduced in Gen 5 and Mewtwo, of course, was introduced in Gen 1. What is even weirder, though, is that Mewtwo is unobtainable in the Gen 5 games except through transfer from previous generations or through an event distribution. Another similar thing also occurred with Heatmore as well, where its former signature move, Fire Lash, was introduced in Generation 7, while Heatmore itself made its debut in Generation 5 and just like Mewtwo in Unova, was unobtainable without transferring in the Alola games, even though its signature move came about in this generation. Along these same lines is a fact concerning two moves. Tearful Look and Baby Doll Eyes are moves that have similar effects, both lowering the opponent's attack, but also share another similarity as well. Their animations fittingly display a large pair of eyes, eyes that seem to directly come from that of a Pokemon, with that Pokemon being Esper in particular. However, despite both of these moves using Esper's eyes in their animations, Esper itself cannot learn either of these moves. Contrary to that last fact, however, there is also a bunch of really nice attention to detail that is put into the animations of various moves. For instance, courtesy of fellow Poketuber Fufutu, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, some moves will have different animations depending on the Pokemon that is using them. There are many signature moves out there that only one Pokemon can learn, but can be used by other Pokemon through other methods like Copycat. Furthermore, as Fu explains in his video, Zoroark is also able to appear as any Pokemon in the game, thanks to its ability, meaning that essentially any Pokemon is capable of using any move in terms of what we see in the game with their animations. Despite this being a really, really niche scenario though, Game Freak accounted for this and gave these signature moves slightly different animations for when Pokemon use them that normally aren't able to, in order for it to make more sense for that Pokemon. So I guess when Game Freak said they were working on making the animations really nice for this game, they meant it. And now you can all feel free to fight about that in the comments below. Another nice attention to detail concerns some move animations that involve shiny Pokemon. 
If a shiny Pokemon is using Blaze Cephalon's signature Mind Blown move through some other special means, the animation will actually display shiny Blaze Cephalon's head instead of the standard one, even if the Blaze Cephalon that this move was obtained from isn't shiny. A similar situation is also true for Dragapult's signature Dragon Darts, where if Dragapult is shiny, it will naturally be launching Shiny Dreepy in its animation instead. However, this move's animation is also different if another Pokemon is using it, even if it's a Ditto transforming into a Dragapult, where it simply just launches two beams of energy instead of the Dreepy. And since we're talking about Sword and Shield and its move animations, one new move in those games that received a lot of attention due to its animation is No Retreat. This move is the signature move of Phalanx, and as mentioned, it's got a pretty cool animation, but something that kind of gets lost in translation is the fact that this entire move, including its animation, is a reference to an ancient Chinese battle. The Japanese, Chinese, and Korean names of No Retreat translate literally into an idiom known as to fight with one's back to the river. This phrase has a similar meaning to the English phrase back against the wall and originates directly from the Battle of Jingxing, which took place in 205 BC in China and is historically noteworthy due to the army of General Han Jin defeating a rival army who vastly outnumbered them, while they were essentially cornered with their backs to a river, which is why a river appears in the background of No Retreat's animation. Rounding out our section on move animations and nice attention to detail, we are going to head back one generation to Gen 7 and look at the Z-move Splintered Storm Shards. Splintered Storm Shards is the signature move of Lycanroc and has an animation that changes depending on the form of Lycanroc that uses it. If Midday Lycanroc is using the move, the animation will be set in the daytime. If Midnight Lycanroc uses it, the move will be set at nighttime. And if Dusk Form Lycanroc uses it, the move will be set at dusk. Moving along, we are now going to transition from nice attention to detail to more ironic inconsistencies. Synchro Noise is a psychic type move that was introduced in Generation 5, and it is a move that deals damage to any Pokemon that is the same type as the user. The ironic part about this is that Umbreon is able to learn this move, despite not being able to use the move properly at all under normal conditions. This is due to the fact that Umbreon is pure dark type, a type which is completely unaffected by psychic moves like Synchro Noise. Another interesting thing concerning a move that comes from Generation 5 is Quash. Quash is a move that is more so intended for double battles as it will make the target Pokemon move last in any given turn. However, even though this move was introduced in Gen 5, none of the Pokemon that were also introduced in Gen 5 can actually learn it. However, another interesting thing about the Pokemon that can learn this move is that every Pokemon that has the word King or Queen in its name is able to learn this move, and that goes along with what this move is all about, as its description states that the user suppresses the target and makes its move go last, which is very fitting for a king and or queen. As we just discussed with the move No Retreat, sometimes Pokemon moves reference real life legends and folklore, and another move that does that is Dragon Ascent. Dragon Ascent gets its Japanese name from the phrase to paint a dragon and dot its eyes, which basically refers to providing the finishing touch to something that brings it to life. This phrase comes from a Chinese legend where a painter named Zhang Senyu was painting some dragons on a mural, and once the eyes were painted in, thus giving them life, the dragons literally came to life and flew up into the heavens. 
This would explain why this move is required for Rayquaza to Mega Evolve, as it gives the spark of life to Rayquaza to reach that evolution. And there you have it, those were some more facts about Pokemon moves. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new for more videos. You can also further support the channel, which helps me to make videos just like this, by checking out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify, as well as other streaming services. You can also potentially win a copy of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl by just listening on Spotify as well, as I will be giving away a copy of those games for every 5,000 new listeners I get there by the time the games come out, so be sure to check it out if you're able to. With that said, I will see you all soon with another video, and until the next one, as always, thanks for watching, I love you very much, and I will smell you guys later.